So, um... Apparently, you're not seeing this on your side, huh? What? This, uh, oh, this... here, right, is everything ejected again? Yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm just uh... busy breaking physics over here. Can you imagine? Like, I'm pushing a round table while standing on it. This is like the sail-powered fan... The fan-powered <laughs> sailboat, you know what I mean? It really is, the fan-powered like, sailboat, this is, yes. This is what we got going on here. It's great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, so Khan started to put down one of the new engine shed covers... And uh, it derails things on the client side. I so did apparently, no such thing. apparently you those cannot, trains no are. Evidence, uh, sir. These are false accusations. Those there's trains no are evidence. not actually derailed, but uh, they are all there's over the no, place right yeah, here. No, there's there's no evidence of the fact, sir. Um, so today we're gonna do some logistical logistics because that's that's yes, fun. Yes, I hate it when it's not logistical logistics. I prefer yeah, the logistics to be I, logistical. I don't know. We're gonna be we're gonna be maintenance guys. Well, not even maintenance. These are these are bridge and building. You said right, guys who fill up the fuel, bridge and building. Well, that's so what they are. so like once the, f the the train crew delivering the fuel would still be train crew, and then like people who would be loading it with shovels would be ultimately reporting to B and B. Employees yeah. of the railroad. Bridge yeah, employees of the people. railroad. Yeah, bridge and building. It's just a different department. Department. They're part of they're the not engineering to touch department. The trains is the idea. Like, can't yeah, drive you're trains. Not, not qualified to operate trains. That's a train crew thing. It's a whole different union. It's a whole different everything. So, yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of different departments to the railroad, and I've been meaning to do like a a modern railroad 101 with how all the departments line out and things, because I think it's something that a lot of people don't know about. I think it'd be kind of an, a neat thing to show off, and I I don't know exactly how it was throughout the history of the railroad, but I mean. I was in management uh, for the BNSF in the mechanical department, so we got to interface with our peers and all the other departments and kind of hear about uh, how everything worked out, and I uh, got a pretty good idea how it works on the modern railroad. Uh, so... Flat spots, it's fine. Oh, right, yeah, you do that. Um, we're going to unload the coal. Let's see how that goes right. into this coal tower we've got. Although, I, based on the coal engine consumption, I feel like we don't really need to do that. And then we need to do the... Um, we need to get the uh, uh, cordwood cars and kind of load up with cordwood because that's the the big biggest stack. <laughs> cordwood always. Every I'm day, pretty sure all the forever. fuels are the same, right? Like every fuel type is the same when you load it into the wood. I so. think so. So yeah, using the right car using with the cordwood most, makes the most sense. Cause yeah, it's just eight, eight eight per car, the most car load six. density. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take that, and then we have fuel at the coal mine. Uh, we have fuel here. And we have fuel at the smelter. We have wood, wood at the smelter. Do we have wood at the coal mine as well? Uh, yeah, I think we have wood at the coal mine. Yeah, we have wood at the smelter for sure. Uh, wood at the coal mine as well for those um, wood. And yes, we do. And we have wood over here at the freight depot area. I don't think we have wood anywhere else because the ironworks and stuff. What, what's going on? Where are you? What happened? So I, I backed up because I Did realized you derail already? no no I backed up because there was no Lincoln pin in the, the this consist here for me to knuckle into uh, hold and on uh, and so I, I, I backed up to put whoa, it in whoa, but stop for a sec. what my recording crashed All right, let's try this again. Test, test, test. Hello. Hello. Uh, this time with feeling, perhaps? Yeah, maybe. So uh, so I guess we get to start your video with just the absolute gold that I just learned about. Yeah, my recording crashed like 10 seconds ago. It's, so... it's fine. Uh, you only missed uh, balancing on the turntable and coming over here. Not a big deal. Um, yeah. So anyways, I was trying to knuckle into these cars, and there was no Lincoln pin. So I stopped, and I went to back up. And I was like, oh, I'll just blow through the brake to put the Lincoln pin in. And then, uh -huh. it, you know, it won't go too far. And uh, this is just the most advanced form of railroading. Oh, yeah. No, the Betsy. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah. This is... Um, my immersion is my immersion yeah, is not... It, it yeah, turns no, out it's, that it's... Uh, it's uh, you I don't, can do that I don't with even... the gear trains, too, I think. And um, one of the other ones I was doing that with as well. Oh, the Class 48. You can do that with. Yeah. This uh, this kills the heist. I am dead inside now. Well, just, you know, it's, it's you just don't think about it too much. You've got, listen, okay, so here's the thing. Notice the, the steam coming out of the whistle is coming out at an angle. That provides a force vector, right? Oh, kind of like a jet engine. Oh, 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 it's a thruster. It's a thruster. It's a thruster. See, now it's thrusting you down to keep you on the tracks, and then you I can, see. It's, 
it's very powerful. That's why just a little bit of vectoring and all of a sudden you're moving in, right, in the appropriate right, direction. Right. Now you won't be able to yep. do it. I'm going to undo this break because you probably can't move at all. Anyway, today, uh, what we're doing, because, uh, you know, video crashed, uh, we're professionals. Um, we're going to back this up and we're going to, you might as well start backing it up. I'm we're trying, go Con. Load up, load up. Oh, is it, you really can't. Is there another really? break on somewhere? Probably. I'm going to go check, I guess. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're going to load up the coal tower with coal and see how that goes. Because um, we have coal here. Oh, I just put that break on. Whoops. Yeah, no, you're uh, good. Do we you're need all these no cars? Place. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna load them all. Why not, right? So well, it, it only takes 20, right? It, that's what it says on the one side. But, but we it don't, says 120. We don't know. I guess we don't know. I guess we could bring them we, all. We have to find out. We're going to do them like two at a time. Then we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, yeah, this break was on. Okay, you're good. No breaks. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to load up all these coal cars, and then we're going to go get some cordwood. Because that's everyone's favorite activity. And we're going to deliver it to the various places we have wood fire depots. So we've got one here, we've got one at the smelter, and we've got one at the coal mine. Um, so I think we'll probably just, we could probably just split the train in half at the logging camp and then go in two different directions. Yeah, that, uh, seems, that makes sense. Because, yeah, what, smelter, coal mine, and here? Yeah. Yeah, and the coal mine... Well, I guess we could just go past the smelter to the coal mine. Couldn't we go up the 10% like idiots? Yeah, and then, and then one over here. I mean, you're only... You're, I mean, we're doing firewood, so you don't need to have, like, a stupid big train. That's, that's true. We'd only be bringing, like, three cars to the coal mine, to be honest. Yeah, like, you don't, we don't need that much firewood. Because we the rest we haven't even used, smelter. like, hardly any of the firewood anyway, so, you know. The smelter firewood's been used a bit. I'm pretty sure it stores 32, which would be four cars per that would be four cars per yeah so you just you just bring four you know load up yeah. 12 four come here four to the smelter four to the coal mine yeah and, i honestly don't know how many and, we uh, have. and we're, we have 12, right? we're gonna we're gonna learn how we load the uh the coal tipple here so, yeah no uh, this is gonna be okay so uh yo you went too far oh it's fine where am i going why am uh, i just keep going back actually i'm gonna we're gonna do this what, uh, what were you planning on doing I don't know. Well, I'm going to pull... I was going to pull you out of one lane and put you back into another, but that's fine. I'm going to shunt you onto the main. So you're going to go forward onto the main, like onto the... Not the main, but the, the lead-off track here, whatever. Okay. And then I'll, I'll unpin you two cars because you can't fit all eight down the siding. Okay. You're, you're fine. I, I got worry. momentum for centuries over here. Yeah, it's... you might as well... You can start going forward I've now. I've been there. Been there, done that, friendo. Okay, perfect. No problem. <laughs> I feel like a job Betsy briefing would before not this. be the engine you'd use for this. I don't know. It's just maybe. Well, I mean, Betsy would be good for switching like this, but uh, yeah, the the cars are definitely showing Betsy uh, what's up. Yeah, my so. thought. Well, it, my only thought was the coal tipple here. It um, it has a relatively small lead track on it because it interferes with our round table operation. So I just wanted right. to. I always call it a round table because I'm kind of con combining the, you know, turntable roundhouse situation. and Right, and it just makes me think of Camelot every yeah, single time. Yeah, we'll build a castle once we actually get, like, aesthetic building stuff. The like, Knights you know, like, of the Round Table? Building brick. Yes, very good. Make this into a giant castle. <laughs> so are you Arthur, King of the Britons, and I get to be Lancelot? Is that how that works? Uh, sure. I was thinking, what's that one, Sir Robin the Brave? You know? He that, bravely that, ran away. Yes, yeah, that is Sir that, Robin. That, kind of, that was kind of the vibe I was getting, to be honest. But Oh, really? Okay. For you? Yeah, because you you, know. uh, you don't feel like sending it everywhere? Well, you know, yeah, yeah I don't. I Now, all I'm picturing in my head is that Betsy is the killer rabbit and flies across the map to murder people. I it really is wish the you, rabbit! I really wish you could paint Betsy, honestly. Like... You imagine if we could like race porters with no speed limit and you know <laughs> and have, have different flames colors flames and stripes on the side yeah exactly like uh, like put flames on the boat i'm telling you fast and furious man dude we're, we're still on that Ra it's, rail rail fast rail furious you know chew fast chew furious bro yeah someone someone sent that in my comments and i was like yeah that's chew, chew fast chew, chew furious, fast yeah. chew furious yeah. yeah, no, that's for sure. But that's so, got to be the sequel, right? Because it's right. like... Right. Yeah, I guess we got to have the first one, which is something else. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you, uh... Okay. I, I'm I'm trying, okay? I'm I don't, using... I don't know how this works. We just load into the coal tipple? Like, as you go forward a little bit? I don't... Uh, it's supposed to be a bottom What are the dump? numbers? The numbers... It's automated? I don't know. All right, it says 0 of 20. You know, let's just, let's just load in this direction, see what happens. Okay. 
I, I pressed it. Is it, is it, is it work? It's not, is it working? it's not, it's not, oh, it's not doing Oh, do, do, do we, do you unload on the wrong side? You unload on the wrong side. You, you feed, that, you feed the grass, loading? you feed the grass, the coal. The oh, coal, you put the, going the up. coal on the grass. Yeah. Okay. And so six, okay. Oh, I had, okay, it's depleting there. Yeah. And how many coal how do we have over here? over here? Oh, literally, it's one to one, dude. Oh. This thing can hold twenty. Oh. Or like one hundred twenty. So, so does that mean we need six thousand, like a million of these, to fill the Tweetsies tender? Is that how that works? I don't know, but it's a hundred. We need like at least all eight of these cars yeah, just to put eighty coal in this. It's yeah. just the elevator can only have twenty at a time. All right, so back up oh, more, I guess. Okay. We'll, we'll that, do all them in chunks. That and is uh, a choice. Get this load up. I, I'm surprised we load the grass. That's the. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, don't, it's, it's I thought we were gonna unload the other way, but anyway, that's fine. You know, coal, Seems a little coal, to um, me. coal is good for grass, maybe. Probably not. Probably not. Have you seen that place in the states where like there's a coal fire underground that's been burning for like 50 years or something? I have heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> and it just like completely messes up everything because it's just too much heat everywhere. Like all the ground is hot. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Heard that, but that's one of those things. that's like, how does that even happen? Like wasn't it like a coal mine that a caught coal on mine fire that or caught fire? Or yeah, I seem to recall. I've heard this story before, and some, somebody right. now in the comments will have the the whole story for us. I'm sure. But if you just stop and kick, these will go right back kicking. into the yard. I want to do some there kicking. Maybe. Oh, they should be. Oh, you didn't line the. You... I did line the switch. How did that switch not? Did you line the right switch? There's two switches I'm right so there. mad about this life of mine <laughs> because I'm riding the rail. That's uh, that's that is the uh, anthem doing of the railroad. extra work Dunk. because the harbor master uh -oh. isn't here. Or even though that's boat, so oh my god, we're it's gonna fine. hit really hard. Dunk. Ow. Okay, well, it's back fine. up. Sick. This is great. This is great, man. <laughs> this is great. We'll, we'll go get the other cars. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right, let's do one of those uh, quick cut things. Oh, we haven't talked about this. Maintenance of way versus bridge and building guys, right? Right. Employees of the railroad, paid by the railroad. Your yes. whole job is shoveling coal. Well, when a train shows up. it depends on what, like, yeah, what your role is with BNB. But yes, that is one of the roles. Do they al they also build the bridges around they the They also take care of the structures, the bridges, the buildings, keeping up with whatever uh, paint. Who designed trim, all these bridges back in the day? I watched this documentary that was talking about the Eiffel Tower and oh, the engineers man, that it designed is, it. It is and all the wrought iron stuff. But like, did they have engineers design this Dude, stuff, or they were just like, eh, railroad, let's put big trees down and it'll work? Old railroad bridges are like just the pile of jank. Like, I'm sure that somebody somewhere designed some part of it but they just like they tested them by just sending a bunch of locomotives across it and parking a bunch of locomotives on them at once like right the stories... like, oh, it holds up we're good to go like it's <laughs> yeah there's stories in like the books like little engines and big men they're talking about oh yeah they tested this new bridge and it's just like yeah they parked like five or six engines on it and it didn't fall down so there you go and you're just like well, 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 who, who said that was okay who said that we could do it that way? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to unpin you when you get closer. Sure. Then. I, I'm sure that they had somebody who did design work because the railroads employed their own host of designers. I mean, railroads usually had like a chief mechanical engineer and a chief structural engineer and, and all that sort of stuff that worked in the offices and, and typically came up through the craft and, and learning things that way, but, um, you know, because like an engineering degree was kind of a foreign concept in the in the 1800s and early 1900s so i remember civil engineers we were told why civil engineers were called civil engineers it was because back in the day there were basically two types of engineers you were either mechanic um not mechanical military or civil and if you weren't a military engineer then you were a civil engineer hence the name civil engineers and uh you know now of course Everybody calls them, you know, sissy put a brick on the ground and call it a creation engineers. But, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's it's fine. I'm always remember, some... always remember, kids, that uh, civil engineers make targets and the mechanical engineers make the things that blow up the targets. <laughs> make the things that shoot the targets? Yes. Like the Gustav! <laughs> yeah, like the Gustav. Dude, the comments Look, on, all, the, on that episode. It circle back to railroads, man. It always comes the, back like, to railroads. The comments on the, the episode where we talked about Schwerer Gustav, the, the railroad cannon, were 
awesome hearing about the the shenanigans that the Germans got up to and how Did they they like, relay track they relayed track right to steer it like there's no yeah way. they they had like, a curve they they built a big curve that they could move the uh, the cannon down to actually aim it and they didn't end up shooting it um uh, at, at either the first you or second target shove this for I, I'm, see, I'm seeing that it's fine we we'll, have a little bit of a we'll, we'll do it we'll do a kick kick we'll kick this and then we'll kick that. See? I don't know how and, this had so much momentum. To uh, be honest, coal but. is heavy. It's fine. But yeah, they like they didn't end up attacking their first target. And then they like dismantled everything, moved it to to take it to a target on the eastern front, and they did all this stuff. And it's like they hardly used the thing. Like they did all this yeah, work, and then and then they it, fired the it like one time, basically. Yeah, <laughs> the logistics of using this freaking massive cannon. It's like not worth the cannon, you know? Like right. it's. That's just so much effort. You're going to have to, yeah, just wait up there until yep. I won't be able yep. to throw the switch for a while. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the more yeah. neat pieces of engineering out there for sure, though. <laughs> yeah. I need the big cannon. Okay, okay. Sure, we're, we're with you so far. All right, so I want to be able to shoot from anywhere on a railroad. Okay, no problem. To, like, the other side of the planet. Yeah, basically. Okay, so we're going to make some sort of propeller wing situation. No, it's got to be a really big gun. Big, just, big just, thing, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. All right, perfect. Kick those, you're good. Uh, you can't, what are you doing? Where are you going? I was hoping I you would time it better. I, See, I can't flick the switch. I try to flick it. It flicks back, man. You gotta... Well, we were, we were experiencing, or like, strange railroads physics. So, I mean, you know, I thought we would just you make know, it this work. Isn't, but... This isn't how you guys run it at the museum, okay? I understand no, you do, no, this... like, live switching, you know? And you, like... <laughs> this is not how Actually, we run things at the museum at all. It's fine. You Our guys wheels must, turn, you guys, so... How, when you go to switch... Uh, you, oh, uh, I need a pin here, I think. Yeah, okay. When you go to uh, switch at like the museum, right? Because I'm assuming you have switches for all sorts of other little tracks. And we blah, do blah, blah. a lot of display tracks, yeah. Right. Um, your switches are like pre-planned, miles ahead of the train. Everything's like like how? What kind of a schedule do you guys keep? Do you even have to? Because you're the so only it's it's kind of interesting. Um, it's usually very much so the day of or the day before a need will be determined. Like, oh yeah, we need to get this car out and bring it down to the shop to be worked on because we got done fast enough with some other work or something and a spot became available or it needed to be come down, brought down for an event or something or last second like, oh, you know, it'd be neat if we had this car for this thing. Usually that sort of uh, uh, deal that determines the need that we need to go fetch a car out of somewhere. Um, right. or, or it ends up needing repairs or something or, wh or whatever, what have you that you run into. And then it's very much a whoever is in charge on the ground, whoever's the head brakeman, the lead brakeman, whatever, uh, is going to come up with the plan. And usually we'll have a briefing beforehand of how it's going to go and, and what the overall plan is. You know, okay, we need to go grab the Caboose 0578. It's buried five cars deep on this one track. So we're going to have to go fish stuff out from on top of it, find a place to stick it, grab the car, put it somewhere else, put it on top of our engine, and then put the other stuff back. Did you guys use a little <laughs> diesel switcher to do that? We'll almost always use the diesels. Uh, yeah, we'll usually use a center cab switcher that we have. It's a 55 ton uh, center cab four axle switcher, uh, diesel number four for us. It's a it's a nice little workhorse. It's uh, always funny watching it go around the, the museum during uh, train operations because it's geared for industrial operations. And so they'll be going wide open throttle, going up the 4% grade, and they'll be doing like two miles an hour. <laughs> is always entertaining um but it's great for switching and, and we usually use that but sometimes we use the steam engine um and some like, oh bro. On. bro how far away was that from the switch that it, it why you, you have to be off of the switch model because you know when you throw the points it affects when you throw stuff the, that's over the switch here. ends here it ends here see now you know how i feel oh my god <laughs> dude I can't believe it. That's so ridiculous. I was like, there's no way I'm not in the clear. All right. You, you got to go be this way and off. Shove them both. You got to be off the switch model. Dude, that's entirely. insane. That's so far away. Yeah. It, and the switches, I mean, the switches are genuinely oversized in this game because I mean, it, it was the early part of Railroads Online. Kume wasn't sure exactly how the 
physical All interaction right. to trains was going to work. And so he made everything nice and gentle because he wanted to make sure that You're he good. could you actually have back up. actual build, physics build. do things. So, Because the, the real model of what goes on is basically two little sleds on each train that actually physically interact with the track. Like they actually right. bump in. They're they're not constrained. It's actually literally just Unreal Engine physics happening, which is why a lot of the uh, the strange things with speed limits and such happen. So, I just realized something too, which is not to put a downer on your day. Uh, you know how when we unload wood to the firewood depot, we make money. Yeah. Does it not work we for not, the coal depot? We do not make money for coal. Well, that's just inconsistent. So when we unload <laughs> all this coal, we've unloaded, you know, probably a thousand dollars worth of coal and made yeah, zero eight, dollars. No, it's sixteen hundred bucks. It's two hundred a car. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So sixteen hundred dollars worth of coal. So this will probably be the only time we fill the coal tipple until we actually use it. Um, yeah, I, I, and, I predict and be it's very gonna careful be, when you're here. It's gonna never be never press delete. It's going to be months before we yeah. actually use which the coal. Which is good, which is good, but don't ever delete it, because then we're... Because then we're out, out another 1600 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's, I was hoping we would get paid for it, because that would be at least something. Yeah, I mean, it, it's actually, honestly, realistic that you're not getting paid for it. Like, yeah, I know, that we shouldn't should get paid probably for the wood be how it's like... all of it changes to. Oh my goodness, break. Where are you going? Uh, you're just, the, you're the, just wasting, the, U, the UI wasting... just stopped responding. You literally just wasted so much coal. I don't think it wasted. The numbers were still going up. Uh, okay. I don't know. It's coming out of your paycheck. Well, we're already not getting paid for it. It's fine. I have a, I have a feeling we wasted a bunch, but that's just me. Gotta, well, we'll, gotta... we'll see. We'll see what the total is. It's at the all end, because okay? you have whiny, this stupid whiny, whiny. fascination with driving with your brake on. Well, I, did, I had my break off that time. That was the problem. Ruin I kept the grabbing the slider and it would work. Ruining the immersion. Actually, you're right. It might not have wasted it. I hope it didn't. It, it seems like that. The, the cars are supposed to stop unloading if they get out of an unload hitbox. That is a nice piece of code that he did put in. So uh, it, should, it should be fine. All right. Well, just kick these forward then, I guess. And uh, got to go grab the cordwood cars. And then uh, what, what engine do we want to run for the cordwood? So the big chonker that we have? I don't know. What's the, so, what's... so oh, okay. So, I'm glad I remembered this. One of my commenters gave a really brilliant idea. And that is, if we bin it with one of our choo-choos, we can't use it the next episode. It has to go sit in the maintenance shed to get fixed. And last episode, we threw the Tweetsie's tender on the ground. So, I think the Tweetsie engine so needs to go to the to shop. and without a tender, is what you're saying? I mean, well, no, no. Don't don't take that lesson from this con. Don't do that I learned, to me. I learned what you were just saying. I understand. Uh, what engine's at the end of the lead here? Is it the Tweetsie? Uh, probably. I think it's the Tweetsie. So, I mean, we could do the railroad thing and steal a different tender because railroads didn't really care. I mean, we don't have the same class of engine, but... Do you want to run it with a different tender? We, we, I mean, stuff. we could do that, or we could just not use it. We could put it in the shop so that it could get fixed after You're the You're just inventing but... rules now. This is like the kid who comes in halfway during in the game once he's already losing, and then invents a bunch of new rules and magically <laughs> he's winning. But this is co-op, Con! <laughs> <laughs> see, see, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's some, there's some rules that have been broken now. Well, you know, but I thought it was, I thought it was a fun thing because, like, All right, there's no fine. penalty I'll, I'll for derailment, so we could just inflict it upon ourselves. Yeah, no, that's that's great. That's great. That's that's when we get to the ten percent and we don't make it up, it, you know, we'll we'll remember. We'll, this we'll blame you for leaving the break on the climax, ding dong. That's why uh, we won't make it I up. I wasn't the one who derailed the tender on the Tweetsie, though, did I? Yes, you were. You were the one that put the whole train together, and then the cars ate the cars. The train went everywhere. I was sitting there peacefully riding as a brakeman, and I start passing our own train on the Any side of, of the ground. Any of up in railroad court, by the way? I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> I'd love to see p railroad court. I'm pretty sure it'd be just about the same thing as the, the Brethren Court in uh, Pirates Dude, that's, of the Caribbean. No, that's our second... We can't give away all the ideas, but that's our second TV show series, right? <laughs> oh, this railroad like, court? Law and Order Railroad Edition, right? And it'll be like exact same as normal Law and Order episodes, but it'll be like you know, like you know, dun 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 dun, and then it'll be like you know the the music, and then someone will come on and be like, "Sir, I saw him driving a two six zero, but his schedule said two eight zero," and it'll be like, Get it. Whoa. you know, like all the dramatic music, and yeah, that'll be but good, that, man. Uh, People will watch this. That could be a vibe. Can I turn on your sand from out here? I yes, know, can I can. You? That's You're touching fun. my levers. I am. I, your levers go all the way out here, so. 
Is the round table set? Because I'm going to put this in the stupid shed. Uh, I don't think it is. Because we need to get another engine out, apparently. Well, you're watch this. I can, I can teleport ahead of you. So. Wah. Can you, though? I can. You can and teleport ahead of me, but you don't even set the switch, bruh. The round table is, in fact... Uh, yeah, I did not set the switch, but the round table is, bruh. in fact, lined. Bruh. <laughs> bruh. Bruh. What else? What else, Gun? You could take the Mosca. Or we could we take not, the We want to take the Mosca to do cordwood? I don't know. To the smelter? Up the 10%? Most, most powerful engine we have here, isn't it? Is it actually? Oh, yeah, it is. Well, I guess we're taking the Mosca. Let me check our can't believe you derailed uh, the tweet, see, man. You derailed what happens the tweet, in, Okay, what happens in your grand scheme of self-inflicted injury when uh, we have, let's say, multiple engines that are binned and we don't have shed space? Is that... Oh, well, <laughs> I've not considered that this. game over? Do we have to, like, keep a running inventory well, then? We're going to have to build another shop. <laughs> build another shed <laughs> next to that shed? Yeah. Go get fixed, 13. It's fine. 13, <laughs> listen. You've 13 been a naughty choo-choo. Dunk. Oh, I just <laughs> derailed it in the shed. Uh, well, I mean, that's just... Um, that's, you know what? We're just going to leave it like this. That's perfect. That That's, that's uh, like... It represents it getting fixed, it's, you know? Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they've just got a complicated jacking arrangement going on they're to just, fix the They're just going to figure out how to get it back on the track. They're just It's, it's like when you jack it's up fine. half your car to change the tire. They're changing this side of the tires right now. Right, So they've got right. it jacked up. You I've, know, wa and I've, then... watched, uh, I've watched uh, a friend of mine drop a caboose with a jack before. That was, that was terrifying. That seems like a terrible... Yeah. Oh my well, god. You know, I it's forgot fine. we had... Look at look at Glenn. Look at this. Look at the Montezuma. It's so the pretty. Boy. We haven't used the Zoomy Boy in a minute. We're gonna have to use him again sometime. Yeah. Alright. Taking Crazy 8. The, li the little Zoom Zoom. God dang Crazy 8, man. This is ridiculous. Zoom Zoom. All right, I'll get this fired up. Uh, you while well, you want to take it out, I'll get the cordwood cars dragged out with the Betsy here. Oh sure, yeah. Let me go get the line get that the started. Here. Can't believe this guy makes up some stupid freaking rules. Now he can't hey, use the best engine. Great, Just great. Spent seven grand on that thing, man. Well, you were like, the oh. one that wrecked it, Con. <laughs> well, I wrecked it, not realizing that we had rules the next episode. Well, you know, it was uh, it was actually suggested a bunch of episodes ago, and I totally spaced oh. it. I was like. That's actually a really cool idea. Like, that's a neat way to add a little flavor, you know, and uh, some amount of repercussion to derailing. So, I does that mean you're going to drive better? Uh, no, not not at all. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm shaking my we, head right now. We, we die like men, even... sir. <laughs> yeah. But now there's a consequence, Heist. There's now consequence. That's fine. I will and? not go back to running the Montezuma over and over again. Just because you destroyed all of our engines. <laughs> what if I build? We ha have we, what if, have what if we I put sheds on every one of those roundhouses? Ha Does that mean we, every engine is perfect all the time? Have we wrecked two engines in an episode? I don't know. I don't know probably. if we've wrecked more than one in one episode. We probably have, but not. Does this not apply to than... engine sheds at like the helper station? Do they do those count as repair sheds? Uh, we're gonna let us know in the comments what you think. We're gonna have to come up with those rules because my thought was this is the big division point this is where our roundhouse is this the is where shed that actually counts this would be our back shop where okay you've severely ruined your choo-choo uh it's got to go to the back shop and go get overhauled all right well so that would be my we're, thought when but... we pull that engine out i'll delete that shed and remake it and make it red so then it's the <laughs> the red shed <laughs> it's the red repair shed you know it's okay. the okay i see how it is it's the only one that counts if that's how you want to play it I think it's all terrible ideas, but you know. Wow, I see how it is. You see, Khan suggests I ideas. I wanted to use the good engine today, Heist. I really wanted to use. Well, you shouldn't have wrecked it engine. last time. Play, and play nice with your toys. And now we're using the bad engine, and I'm going to be grumpy about it because I'm a railroader, and I like to be grumpy when things aren't going my way. Because that's, what's, that's what's, what's wrong with the Mosca? The Mosca's the, uh, the Mosca might be the prettiest engine we have. It doesn't burn the black stuff. Oh, well, I mean, that's that's It only fair. burns the wood stuff, and it doesn't go as, as powerful, and it has less less chuffs for ch per choo-choo, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I'm... It's a very, very technical term. You're you're, yeah, you're up here, and the uh, you just letting Betsy just take that? Yeah, man, she'll be fine. Oh, okay. I think. Right. Okay. Unless she's lined for the iron, in which case, oh, God, she's lined for the iron. Uh, you mean the coal unload? 
Hold on, bud. You're all over the place today, bud. She's not gonna be fine, Heist. She's not <laughs> gonna be. Hold on. I made it. I made. Oh God. No, no, no. Get it. Get it. Get it. Don't. Oh my God, Con. 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 Oh no. <laughs> What was the rule on do you know? Do you know how many cups we need for this? <laughs> they didn't say anything about cars. We don't have a car shop, but we could, we could build a car shop in honor of you wrecking the entire oh. train! <laughs> oh, that was, that's, that's what happens when, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, a movable object hits an unstoppable force? Is that unstoppable so, yeah, force? Yeah, something a like that. Yeah. Oh man, that uh, is that was that's one, a rough two, one. three, four, five, six, seven, seven cars in the dirt. Wow, that's pretty good. I'll have you know, I received the crap for the Kenoshas and and the, the peacups, but the well, last two wrecks fair, have been fair, the biggest, and they've both been the yours. Cup? Do I have to pee in the cup though? Yes! No one was driving the train. Yes, you were the one who opened the throttle and walked away, ding dong. <laughs> Oh my god! It was, it was twelve cars. I had to put it in notch eight. It, enjoy, enjoy your ninety days off, sir. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. Well, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Yeah, uh, um, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah, re-rail this mess, and uh, we'll, we'll see you back yeah. in just a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be fine. Alrighty, heist, we're good to go. Highball it. One, High two, ball. three, <laughs> four, five. Yeah, count the cars. Make sure you got eight, all of them. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. How many cordwood cards? Eleven, twelve. We have eighteen, 13, don't we? Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Wow, we have eighteen. Why did we buy eighteen cordwood cards? What were we doing? Uh, cause the smelter's out of cordwood always, and if I recall, it is currently out of cordwood once again. So yeah, we should but we're just probably... gonna grab cordwood and, and bring it back here. Yeah, and, let's, and let's hump have our cordwood loads. because we have yeah. to distribute it later, and this is what you would use a yard for. Yeah, yeah. So we bring it back to the central location as the road train, and then, and then divest it. it out into a bunch of little manifest trains. Exactly. Our hopper consist there needs to be squished together at some point. Uh, we'll, but that's we'll fine. deal with that. Uh, important question, I guess, because well, we never really talked about this before. Uh, since we have new rules now with this whole binning train nonsense thing, I gotta get that switch for you. Um, what happens if we bin the train on the road? Oh, that's a good question. Like, are we not allowed? The, 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 the penalty that was discussed by the YouTube viewer, and I'm, I'm sorry that I'm forgetting your name, um, was to just not be able to use it the next episode. Uh, right, which is but probably if we bin it on the road, painful. I feel like I feel like we're not allowed to use it for the rest of that episode too. I mean, I guess it depends on how hard it's been. Like if it just goes off, I think it's fine. But if it's like, okay. oh God, you rolled down the mountain, good God. Okay, maybe drag it back home. That could be fun. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, you oh. know, if, you know, let us know in the comments, of course, what you think. Like if we should implement we're it for cars and stuff. playing hardcore mode all of a sudden. Hard, just, hardcore railroads. Just hardcore. We, we, we want, we want to, you know, penalties for our for our hubris yes i'm um, down i'm down to say that if the train is still mostly on the track kind of like the one that we left in the shed there right it's like mostly on the track we're allowed to rerail that if it's completely off the track we have to leave it and then come back with some other engine and then drag it i can, I can live by that rule i can live by that rule and if yeah. we do uh if we do end up wanting to do car stuff too we could also add like a rip track and a car shop and i, I and don't talk about I don't, those things i don't want to so. i don't want to do car stuff like yeah I, that, it, that gets all, into all that gets cars, into a lot of a lot of keeping track all of, a lot of these of things. cars would just be they would just scrap them there's no way they would fix them they would just be depends would, on the era of the railroad if if these, these were new would be wooden splinters sir there's no way they would have probably they, that you you'd be surprised at what they would have rebuilt like Really? Like, it but depends. wouldn't these cars, like, wouldn't the main wooden structural beams in these cars all be just destroyed from the crumpling of it that? Might, it might, they might be, but they might not be. I mean, most of the cars are typically made out of white oak, which is actually pretty strong, uh, and they're pretty significantly sized sills. The, that, the structural members in the car are usually called the, the main sill, side sill, all that sort of stuff that actually builds up the pieces longitudinally. And they're usually like six by eight inch, you know, chunks of oak. 
and in this sort of application so they're actually pretty stout um but at the end of the day, it's a piece of wood, so you just replace it in kind with a piece of wood, and you rebuild the car and go on with your life. The trucks, the iron, the bolster, all that stuff is is whatever. Um, and so if these were newer cars, the railroad actually probably would have tried to repair them. Yeah, if they were really screwed up, okay, start over. Uh, burn the car down, pick up the iron, and, and do it again. But Who who makes railroad cars modern day? and real and oh back, goodness and back, uh they're, because you have locomotive manufacturers obviously right but locomotive manufacturers they're not they're not making rail cars too are they um i there's probably some that did uh i don't know of any that like off the top of my head like the locomotive manufacturers i've heard of i haven't heard of them making cars um i've heard of them making all sorts of random things uh <laughs> but such as the uh, the name of being a big manufacturer during wartime um like Baldwin, the locomotive manufacturer, actually manufactured rifles back in the uh, World War One era. So it, you can go and find a locomotive builder built uh, they rifle. They powered rifles too. You no, to, they like, were they were just bog standard, and... you know, rifle that uh, you know, like was whatever the normal bolt action back in then. But anyway, um, the car builders. I mean, you had car builders that were companies that would do that. Like the the coaches that the Rio Grande had that we have a couple at the museum was made by Jackson and Sharp. A lot of the cars in the game were made by a company called Bodie and Benton. Um, it, it just depends. And, and cars, more so than locomotives, were pretty regularly built by the railroads themselves as well. Um, not necessarily they meaning that... things or whatever. And... Yeah, I mean, they were, they were less complex than a locomotive. A car is pretty standard, and, and a lot of different railroads have their own patterns for trucks. Like the Rio Grande, all the cars on our, uh, that are Rio Grande cars pretty much have replica trucks or Rio Grande Railroad built trucks underneath them rather than the original Jackson and Sharp trucks anymore because as they right. change them and change things I mean the, the cars are very different than they were in 1881 when they were delivered so uh, the railroads ended up changing a lot of stuff along the way throughout the history of the car but there, there are several manufacturers of course too that were dedicated for building cars and that's true through to this day although it's more so the uh the cars are made by external sources these days, more so as the railroads are trying to outsource any sort of liability and all that sort of stuff. The railroads make and a lot who less owns stuff the car? these days. Like the railroad, you guys own the engines and your own locomotives and whatever. Yes. And then what, does an industry buy, a, like if I, if I own a chemical plant and I need to transport chemicals by rail, do I have to buy the cars to transport you my don't. own chemicals? So the interesting thing is there's a bunch of different people that own rail cars. Um, most, mostly not the railroads themselves, actually. The railroads own a number of things, like BNSF pretty famously owns uh, a ton of their grain hoppers that they use for shipping grain and soybeans and wheat and all this sort of stuff across the, the northern parts of the U.S. to the ports on the west. Um, you'll see unit trains of these red cylindrical hoppers that all say BNSF on the side. It's like, okay, they own those. But there are a lot of different manufacturers and companies and banks and all sorts of outfits that own their own rolling stock and many of them actually own their own locomotives and then just lease them um, so if you own your own cars right yes and and some engineer bins it and puts them in the dirt for whatever reason you have to pay for the maintenance costs of those cars well, so this comes down to a fun amount of litigation and things, of course, right? Oh, you always so what you're saying involved. is Law and Order Train Edition. Is a real thing. Yes, Law and Order Train Edition could be a thing. Dun, 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 so uh, this is actually a we pretty We saw neat... that you had you were going 15 in a 14 mile an hour zone. <laughs> Therefore, and you binned seven cars. Da, 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 da. You, you owe TTX that money. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So uh, there, there is actually a neat set up for this because most of the railroads don't own most of the cars they move and they interchange between railroads so what happens when a car that is owned by Citibank under the reporting mark of something like CREX they own train cars and locomotives and things Why would um, a bank own a because train? it's an investment property for them they can lease them out and make money off of them and it's a way that they can have their money into an asset and that's How a fast whole business does it thing take to cover the lease of, like, like the price of a car is what few hundred thousand dollars something like that a right? car a hundred thousand two hundred thousand maybe these days yeah right okay and so how long would it take you to lease that out to cover its own cost that is think? a great question that i don't know the answer to <laughs> i feel like it would be like at least like 10 years right like minimum well the cars 
like the service life of a train car is pretty long 30 40 right. 50 sometimes even longer than that you know so um it's definitely possible uh, but anyway say that car derails or it needs work and it's on a union pacific train when the thing breaks and then it gets uh interchanged over to bnsf and bnsf gets the car and inspects it sees the problem okay well they bring it to their car shop they fix whatever it is and whatever the fix is the american association of railroads the aar has a standardized price for that repair it, okay you had a grab iron brake on your car that is considered standard wear and tear whatever bolts come loose things happen whatever Right, it but breaks. Like, like, they bill the owner for doing the maintenance on their car. It's a standard bill, standard amount of hours. Whether or not it takes the railroad longer to actually fix it, I'm, well, that's I'm too bad. So, but I'm just so confused about the logistics of this. Okay, so like, so you have railroad company A, the the railroad owner. They own the rail. They're responsible for maintaining the rail. They drive the locomotives. They have the engineers and the staff. Right, and they need to bring goods from industry A to industry B. Right, so you have industry A and industry B, railroad company C, then you've got the car owner D, who leases the cars to the railroad because the industries are asking the railroad to do, like who you know what I mean? They're, like, they're not technically leasing the cars to the railroad. They're they are hauling cargo, you know, they're carrying cargo for the railroad in that car, but they still own the cars and they're not leased, so they get a cut of whatever the revenue is. Of whatever the railroad yeah, you, you shipped it, you made this much money, so you made it using my car. company just says, boom. like, hey, we built our factory on the side of this railroad. We need you to transport 7,000 things from here to there, you know, figure it out. And then the railroad goes, okay, we need a certain number of these kind of cars to do that. Let's go get cars owned from X, Y, and Z, throw them on a train, and now we have to pay a cut to X, Y, and Z because we use their car. Uh, either that or still. in some applications, they do lease them as well. It depends on the arrangement. There's a lot of different arrangements for these sorts of things um, because of the complexity of it. But yeah, I mean, it, it is for the customer. Railroad. It's, it's Bureaucratic a simple addition. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and there's a lot of bureaucracy and Let's politics that goes into it. Let's make a game that's just a text space Railroads game, right? There's no... 1980s uh, style, and yeah. just filling out all the forms to, like, transport goods from point A to point B, you it's, know? It's a surprisingly large amount. Um, yeah. the, the easy uh -huh. thing, like, for the customer, you're like, hey, I'm on the railroad. I need some stuff shipped. Okay, come pick it up. And then the railroad has to figure it out. And the railroad is usually not very good at figuring it out, which is usually why the com customers end up complaining. Because <laughs> the logistics yeah, I'm of, okay. About that, cause like, I know like when I worked at GM, they had a big rail yard right next to the plant for loading cars onto car carriers, even like modern, right? Right. And, you know, like I would imagine GM would own some of their own rail cars. They've got money. They're a big company. Like, it wouldn't make sense for them to lease that stuff, right? Like, I, I don't, you know, but they're still paying someone else to come and operate the trains and move the, the Right, you know, I'm, I'm not sure who owns Autorack specifically. I've seen Autoracks with company, like railroad company logos on them. Right. Um, so they, they may be owned by the railroads, but I mean, I could see GM owning some stuff too. Um, it just seems like a silly thing for GM. Like GM doesn't like really paying for other people's stuff. Right. Well, you know, but I mean, I feel like that's every big company, sh but shipping of things via the railroad is such a big thing at that point that, okay, maybe that's the one thing that they do pay for because how else are you going to move that many cars? Yeah. It's much cheaper to move cars by a railroad than trucks. What are you doing, friendo? Maybe Why? I'm dancing on top of the log. No, pile. not you train. I mean, the train's fine. Is it moving? It's moving on my end. It's still, it's standing still. You're fine. Calm down. <laughs> I'm gonna save. It's probably a good idea, cause it's just, it's just, uh, 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 oh, oh god, oh god. Uh, uh, everything just derailed. Everything just derailed. It's oh fine. nope. Okay. Uh, look, presto changeo, it's back. Ice is having a stroke. Uh, I don't know what's going on on my end. This is not a part of railroad bureaucracy. This is part of, uh client side uh, networking shenanigans i think i find it so interesting <laughs> the uh the amount of the amount of uh infrastructure not infrastructure the amount of um like like it's like you know 
how do I explain this? The amount of people required to move a train from point A to point B is a lot more than you would think. It is. It is a lot That's... more than just a guy to pull the throttle and a guy to yeah, do the paperwork. Yeah, like it's just yeah. it's just a lot of like nonsense just to get the whole train assembled and and moved and you know the goods to load and unload and yeah. It's a lot easier to truck and transport something, you know? Like, when, whenever I saw transport trucks showing up the factories I worked at, it's like, one guy on a forklift loads the truck, and then the truck driver leaves, you know? And then, like, that's that's it. Right. And then a new yeah. truck shows up, and the, they say, uh... loading bay 6. Oh, okay, cool. Backs into loading bay 6. Forklift comes in, unloads, new forklift loads, whatever. See it by. Like, it's like two people, you know? Yeah, it's a lot different in the railroad where, I mean, you're dealing with so many different things that add up into it, right? Is that spot going to work back there? Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, in the railroad, if you think of like an intermodal train, and an intermodal train being one of the ones that's got the containers that sit in well cars that might be dual stacked. Right. Um, Are those dual stack containers attached or do they just sit on pegs? I'm pretty sure they just sit on pegs. They just sit on pegs, right? And their weight is heavy enough to just, like, well, there's yeah, no they're, strap. They're stupid heavy, yeah. Yeah, their weight just holds them on the... It's just literally, like, I'm pretty racks. sure, you That's know, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of locking mechanism between the two on the pegs, but, like, I, I've never dealt with the loading of intermodal. Yeah, so. to me, they look like they're just sitting on pegs. and like, They do, but there, there might be, like, a rotary kind of clamp lock. It's not just a gravity thing, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it's just a gravity thing. So, hey, any intermodal workers out there, let us know. But you, th you think of an intermodal train runs from Seattle to Chicago. That's one of the most, most common routes that I ended up helping protect when I worked for BNSF because that was the, the hot commodity. God, you get into peak season, you get around Christmas time, you you best not be delaying the Z, man. Hey, oh, where do they get... Good what, God. What port do those containers come off of? Because they're coming off some port. Yeah, the port of Seattle. Oh, it's Seattle. So they come from like overseas to Seattle. Yep. And then there's rail lines that run right up to the port, and the yep. containers like they they offload crane. they offload with a crane from the ship to uh, the actual pretty much dockyard itself. Then they put them on trucks, uh, which are basically they're not like a real truck. The, but they're, they're the, they're the a, local a, dock trucks. They're the local dock like, truck to to shift around the the container right. on a skeleton, you know, transfer. And they don't thing. go straight from crane. They don't go straight from boat to train ever. Like there's a there's, uh, there's they don't. Go. There's probably a place where that happens because, you know, it depends, right? That's that's our drinking game at this point. Uh, there's probably right. a place that happens, but everywhere I've seen, they use it like a, uh, the dock as a capacitor of we're going to fill right. it up with these containers and then they'll get doled out to the trains uh, as accordingly because they may not all be going to the same destination and everything anyways. So but anyway, they take them off. So you got guys that run the cranes. You got guys that run the skeleton trucks that actually move the the containers around. There's a special right, term for those. I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, they'll move I, those I know guys what around because they have them at factories too. And I'm trying right. to think. They're like a lot of them. The ones that I saw are like side cab. Even it's just like yeah, a frame with a yeah, side cab. Exactly. And it it can hook up to an 18 wheeler trailer and just drag around stuff that like it wouldn't go very fast down a road or anything. But I, I can't remember what the name of them is though. Yeah, but. neither can I. Oh well, someone in the comments will get it. But uh, those things then, you know, will go take those from the storage location and load them onto trains or put them next to the train for the crane that can go along the rails to then pick up and put on the train cars when it gets there. And only once the train's loaded does the railroad take it. So you got a bunch of people there to make the train get loaded. Uh, so they have their own, they would have their own switching engines for loading up their own train cars and assembling them into a lane. So... And then just like Derail Valley, you show up and go, oh, I'm picking up. 12 cars from lane six and and getting out of here or well like so they're they're usually set up a little bit more expediently these days where um and usually it's actually switched out by the actual railroad because these bigger facilities like you only think about uh, a small facility tending to switch and service itself because they've got special loading requirements in the case of intermodal the, the BNSF crew would come in, they would spot the train, and they've got a 5,000 foot long track there, or however long it is, with, you know, 80, 100, 120 cars, or maybe it's 60, and they have to have two tracks they put together to make one train. Um, they leave the cars there, and then the those little rigs will set the containers next to the cars, and the cranes are on tracks that are next to the tracks, and they literally just drive down the length of the train, pick up a container, put it in a car, move to the next car, boom, 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 until the whole that, train's like, loaded. The, 
so the railroad engineer will like show up with his locomotive and then he'll be sitting there waiting for them to load all this stuff or is it it'll so the crew the crew doesn't get up. called till it's loaded so like the oh, okay. the true the crew will come in uh they'll bring the empties in they'll or actually it would be loaded in it whatever they bring the loaded train in from the You're other good, destination the moving up to they spot it, the cranes unload it, and then the cranes reload it with the new stuff, which is a whole process. But the engineer's not waiting that whole time. Engineer pulls in, spots the cars, and then he's off duty. Um, All right, you're good. And then, you know, it's probably a different engineer and different conductor that comes back when uh, when it's time to get things loaded again. Um, and so then once all that happens, you have the magic dance. If train comes in, cranes unload it, skeleton rigs take the, the containers, put them wherever for... Uh, either to go on boats or to go on uh, trucks or wh whatever it is. Empty well cars get loaded up by the cranes as the, the new containers get staged. Train crew gets called. Train heads out. They grab fresh locomotives from Mechanical or from wherever they're uh, they're staged around the yard. We didn't really keep staged consists at Mechanical in Seattle because of geometry problems. Uh, so they would grab these built consists that were serviced, ready to go and start to take them over the road. And the crew could run them for 12 hours, and then you needed a new crew. So you'd be doing crew swaps, all this stuff. So by the time you get to Chicago, I mean, you've probably had five, six, maybe seven train crews, depending on, and depending on just the level of service it is. You've probably been serviced by probably 20 different mechanical employees stopping for fuel, stopping for sand, uh, for crew packs to get reloaded. I, I, you're not supposed to tell people about how you like getting serviced by 20 different mechanical employees. Well, I mean, game. you know. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't pull, don't pull. You got it. You got, you got, you got more load still. We still we're got, still loading. We're not done we're being still serviced. Loading. You're, you're jumping the gun there. The thought of being serviced by 20 mechanical. Oh, it got me excited. Crews. Okay. You know, got, the, you got the SFS. Have you ever been SFS? Sand fuel serviced, dude. <laughs> at the at the DSF, the diesel servicing oh, facility. Oh God. Ah oh, man, I did a whole episode once where I talked about uh, pipe. There was I was I was playing the car racing game Zape Kissed, and uh, we were <laughs> riding pipe. Talking. And I talked about riding pipe the whole time, and people could not keep themselves together in the comments. They were <laughs> well, well, you did that to yourself, Con. <laughs> they were very they they were just I didn't understand what was so it was just an innocent pipe riding track, you know. And well, everyone you know. was just they were all into it, so. It was uh, one of those in your window kind of things, I think, maybe that uh, yeah was getting people uh, fired up, is moving up, and then. It was interesting to me. me, like you know, you don't really think about it um, very much. Like you just kind of, it's you know, one of the marvels of modern society is just being able to go to a store and pick stuff up. And uh, how's that spot? Yeah, that's good. And uh, you don't think about all the logistics it takes to get the stuff there it's you know? a lot there's a lot on the backside, and it's so interesting the amount of people in the public that i talk to that don't know anything about trains or they've never How ridden a train still, you're still moving a little bit uh no yes no i'm gonna tie a brake here oh no it stopped okay i tied a brake to make it stop i don't know why it was still rolling the brake was on on the engine anyway i don't know um the amount of public and people that have like never been on a train, don't know anything about trains that I run into, it's like it's not a common part of life anymore because nobody travels by train really. Because, no, you fly. You know, Amtrak is inconvenient and it takes a long time and it's as expensive yeah, you, as flying. You drive so, or you fly. Yeah, so uh, you know it doesn't. Although really... America would be prime for a high speed railroad, just saying. Yeah, there's a lot of places it would be really nice to have high speed rail, and they're actually working on some high speed rail projects. Uh, Brightline's doing some cool stuff, so. Hopefully we start to see some of that stuff. But. I think we just need to we need to adopt the vacuum tube. Project, okay, Con, stop. Where we suck Cease. people through vacuum no. tubes like those. This is not Futurama. It's not Fu Futurama. And we can just we can just send them, <laughs> you know, vacuum tube. And then it'll be a problem with obesity though, because you'll need variable tubing sizes for well, different sizes. Well, I mean, of it people. just means you've got a better vacuum seal, right? Is that is that how that works? Yeah, but like if you fine. put a really skinny person in like a tube that's like six feet wide, or well, you just you just load them into a sabo, like like it's a oh right, it's a yeah, capsule, and then yeah, yeah like yeah. they'll just wear inflatable fat suits while they go through these. <laughs> Welcome to Khan's future, everyone. It's Dude, it's a, it is we a make, place. We can make the ultimate dystopian society here. You know, that's uh that is a place. It's not a good place, but it is a place. <laughs> you ever you ever heard of the multiverse theory? You know, the multiverse yes. universe. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So. Cons section there's a the universe like is, that uh, man there's one. a universe out there where anything you could dream of exists right that's so that yes that is a thing <laughs> you're ahead too by the way whatever you want to a head too
Anyway, yeah, so railroad stuff is, like, really removed from the general public. Like, people's interface with the railroad is, I got stuck at a grade crossing and had to wait for the big train to go by, but it doesn't impact me, and it doesn't matter to me, and it's unimportant because it's Still just a pretty, train, right? pretty global, though, in terms of how much freight gets transported right. by rail every year. So, uh, is that spot good? You can go ahead a little bit, but it'll okay. probably still work anyway. Okay, I'll go just a Yeah, it's still anyway. working anyway. Okay. Um, if you buy something on Amazon Prime in the United States... They lay track right to your door. They lay track to your... Right, it's, it's a train that delivers it. <laughs> and you got, it's a you got train me. that shows yep. up. Just, you, you hear you hear the sound of a GE7 FDL diesel yeah. engine and sneezing air compressor. And if you're not home, they'll uh, play yeah. the five time right at your yeah. door. Just so right you can, there. No, yeah. so... The reason it works, they have these distribution centers that are giant warehouses that all the trucks and okay, the guy in the truck or the van shows up and delivers the thing. Okay, well, how did it all get to that distribution center in the first place? Well, guess what? It came on a train, probably a BNSF train if you're on the West Coast uh, or UP, um, from Seattle, from Los Angeles, from Portland, one of those different ports came on the distribution network via railroad to Chicago. Then it went out and got loaded from the containers to the warehouse, and then it gets available to you. So, right. okay, you, you're not on the receiving end, but things that you buy have probably been on a train. Most things that you buy have probably been And they've been probably on been a on train. a boat, too. Probably been on a boat, too. The very true. For like 60 plus days on a boat. You know how the long slow, it takes the to slow sail boat across the China. ocean? Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's crazy. You look at the size of these, and they're like, man, we're, we're burning like 12,000 gallons per hour, and it takes us six, 60 days to get there. Yeah. Uh, no big but, deal. I mean, the, the boats, I mean, the like, okay. So th there's this whole thing with, like, train guys, like, where we, we get it's excited. Yeah. Us, us train guys get excited when talking to car guys because we can joke about how big everything we work on is compared to car guy stuff. And yeah, then the and then boat people show up. Yeah, I know, and right? the boat people—that's a whole different universe. Cars are like cars are like thousands, right? It's like when you get a, if you have a thousand dollars, you have a car, and you're like, yeah, look at me, I got a thousand dollars. And the train guy's like, please look at, I've got a million dollars. And the boat's guy like is just like, hold my trillions, just just yeah. Like, just yeah, on, on your car, you've got maybe maybe some half inch hardware. You're good ahead too, by the way. Maybe maybe something about that on the train. It's like okay, I got some two inch, four inch hardware, just depending on. And then the boat, it's like yeah, I got some four foot hardware, and you're like what? Yeah. <laughs> how the boat how big is the wrench? Boat more than the whole train itself. Yeah. Like it, yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, they're just it's a whole other level of engineering. Man, this thing doesn't have air brakes. I forgot about that. If only yeah. we. Then, if only Con didn't wreck the Tweetsy. Well, I didn't make up the rules, right? So, you know. <laughs> you would have driven more carefully. You can argue about this all you want, but I did not make up the rules, sir. Uh, you, see, you see how he's complaining? You see, folks? You see what it is? He's just mad have seen, that he had a Have you seen boats when they're like, it, they're like, a boat does like 20 knots, and they're like, man, that's boat, that boat's rocking fast because it can do like, like 50 kilometers an hour or something. And, right. you know, that's considered like ludicrous speed, you know? Okay. Yeah. I was just I was just thinking about it, and then you train guys are like, we can do hundred kilometers an hour. Whoa, yeah. But, and then car guys are like, yeah, what's the land speed record? Like seven hundred miles an hour in a car, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> it's fine. It's very it, it's fun to to be able to compare those things. What's the speed limit on most railroads? Like most class one. The the speed limit that you end up with if it's like a big thoroughfare, the big absolute mainline, max, like the autobahn of train roads. You the, know? Well, so for most railroads, it's seventy nine miles an hour because the laws on what you have to have in terms of train control. Hold on, systems, let me just convert that to normal people units real quick. That's vaguely one hundred twenty kilometers an hour. One hundred twenty seven kilometers. One hundred twenty seven. Okay. 127 kilometers an hour it's the, yeah. the mile an hour before 80 because the the new rules apply 80 and above and the amount of stuff you have to have in terms of train control like cab signal and stuff to go faster than 80 makes it pretty cost prohibitive well, you, except you need in special notch places eight. um you need a notch eight number one well i mean you, you need and that then you to need get those like what is it 20 anyway, cars 20 20 loaded cars uh, it was eight. 30 32 36 39 cars? it was 30 something cars uh i thankfully don't remember much of that movie anymore so um you know it's fine 
Sounds like you need a rewatch to really educate yourself. <laughs> oh, Donna, that, that, that movie's pain. That movie is pain, and it can only be watched we need to uh, make while violating same, rule G. Literally the exact same movie, but narrow gauge. That's, so that's... so we've been planning, and I've, I've hinted at it a couple times on the channel, and I have the same start script. of the script. No, we, you know? we, we're going to do Unsplodable, which is going to be our parody on the three foot narrow gauge of unstoppable. Right, but then but with you know the that scene where they're like the in the cars. command center and they're looking at the train coming down the track and they're trying to route the signals. Yeah. You'd have to be like, oh my God, there's this, like, they're looking at a schedule because there's no screens, right? And they're like, oh my God, so-and-so is on the same schedule. He's going to be there, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to get like the whole Lord of the Rings thing where it's like, light the towers. And the guy's like lighting towers. <laughs> and the track, let the, the guy beacons are lit. And flags and like, you know. <laughs> The beacons of Ministereth! Yeah. Thunder calls for aid! Yes. Um, yeah, the Rio Grande the calls for aid! So and the Rio like, Grande oh, Southern shall switch. answer! The switch. And it's like, you know those old signal towers where they use the flags in the different positions? You know, you got a bunch of those. The guys are like relaying it down the track ahead of this, you know, unstoppable okay, train. So, right? so I had already had plans for Unsplodable and then Pirates of the Mainline afterwards. Now I guess Lord of the Rails has to become yeah, the, the, third, the, third, the third parody. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the highest I, budget I one. I will take the golden spike to <laughs> Isengard. <laughs> <laughs> it, needs to, it needs to be cast into the fire. Yeah. Of, oh god! You must cast the golden spike into the fire. Oh god! <laughs> into the firebox at Mount Doom at Baldwin. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, the indus the stationary boiler <laughs> yeah. for the Baldwin shops. There you go. Oh yeah, we're, god, man! You know what's sad? <laughs> they, is, like, they, they write be, themselves. These would be better movies than like half the movies that come out on a regular basis. Like it's, honestly, uh, it's not hard. It's really not yeah. hard. I was like talking about game. something earlier, and you derailed my conversation. And now ah, I don't dude, what it was. I was just—I was so excited about all the movie <laughs> prospects. Honestly, it's the, been the highlight they write of my themselves, life. Man, it's—it's uh, it's genius. We really—I really should get into script writing because I feel like I could write a terrible script just based on you know, yeah. one of these one yeah. of these ideas easily. <laughs> the dialogue like writes itself. It, like, really, it, does. Really, it, it really, really does. It really, it really does. You just take every other terrible movie that's ever been made and just you know, boom, done problem solved all right we're good okay I'm, I'm running back up to the head end here it's fine we're gonna hump 18 cars that's gonna be great that's uh, that's a lot of cars to hump and they're gonna be loaded they're gonna, they're yeah, gonna well, take us for a ride here. i hope we can actually make it up the hump with 18 loaded uh, it's, uh, uh, moscow's got some attractive effort yeah we could take a run at it too but <laughs> Come oh on. man, that's yeah. I derailed your thought. I'm sorry. I just get so excited by the. Oh, you were you you were blitzing past the fact that you derailed your engine, and and that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you made the rule changes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We made the rule change today, but you you were the one that derailed the engine in the first place after telling me how you're the better engineer and you don't derail ever. So. Well, I don't drive nearly as much. So like derails per hour. <laughs> DPH, you know, yes, the DPH, metric. DPH, yes. Yeah. Like, my DPH based on runtime is much better than your DPH, I feel. Someone could probably take all of our episodes and do the math on DPHs, <laughs> and I would love to see that statistic. <laughs> but you know, who's you driving for what, what proportion? Of video, based on all those videos, how often I run the train versus how often you do, add up the total time of both of those, and then divide it by the number of derails each person did. That's your DPH, right? <laughs> It's perfect. Uh, Do this math. Uh, it's foolproof. Yeah. It's full full proof. And I'm sure that I'm sure my DPH is lower than yours. You know, that's and that's the That's that's pro your your DPH is probably lower than mine. Yeah. But the right. severity of your DPH. No, but that doesn't. The, the too, severity's not. But that's not what we're, too, concerned with. we're concerned the with. The amount of cars that you've derailed, the last two derails that you've had, has been spectacular. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't just get in a fender bender. I total it. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna total <laughs> gonna, it, I'm gonna total gonna it. Send it. Yeah. Like you know, it's just. I I only had that one bad one where I was trying to tie a handbrake and then I got thrown off of the train by physics and then I watched the train sail down the ten percent and put every car in the dirt. Sounds but, like a skill issue, bro. Uh, it was fine, you know. It's fine. The internet hated uh, okay, me. Okay, so uh, at, obviously you run a lot of real life locomotives. Right. Um, this has to have happened. Dumbest thing that has fallen off of your locomotive. Not necessarily your fault, but someone on your crew lost something off the locomotive like, there has to be something oh that, like oh oh like somebody dropped something something or like something they 
flew off the side or like they were shoveling and the shovel handle came off and flew off and you know i have i have lost this the, the coal scoop over the side ones and that was one of my one of my favorite stupid moments at the museum and then you just don't have a coal scoop for 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 a lap yeah that's the nice thing about the museum is it's a circle so this was actually funny so we're running 346 which we call grandma who's getting her big rebuild right now so so someday grandma will be back with us but little 280 uh like the class 70 uh modern class 70 in the game and the hook that holds the coal scoop when you're not shoveling is just kind of a bent piece of wire thick wire that just hangs on the tender and we went around the curve and something shifted as i was putting the scoop back and i was kind of lazy and kind of like tossing it up there a bit and it it bounced off of the hook and fell over the side at, at the bottom of the hill before we went through the crossing and it's like oh crap i watched in slow-mo in my brain as the coal scoop flies off the side and it's like uh so i took one last look at the fire and i threw a couple pieces of coal in by hand like okay just in case and we get going through the station platform and i see one of the volunteers there and i called to him like hey i dropped the coal scoop can you go over and grab it and then meet me at the crossing with it next time because it's like first lap it's gonna need it whatever so we come around again had no problems because my fire was already set didn't have to put anything else in and we we're coming around and get in vision of the crossing and there's that volunteer he wasn't an ops guy to be fair but he's standing there with like a big track shovel that's got like a six foot long handle on it and it's oh, like perfect. very much not a coal scoop um just like the coal scoop in the game isn't a coal scoop but that's fine um <laughs> and so it was like Got my engineer down to a crawl, and uh, I broke our rules. We're not allowed to get on and off moving equipment, and I got off moving equipment to go fetch my coal scoop so that we didn't have to stop and restart. But I did it properly. I followed the correct procedure for doing so because we were trained in how to do it in case of emergency. I'm just picturing you tumbling down. like. Oh, yeah, you just you just yeet and off like, the side like and do a barrel roll. And like yeah. about your like face is about to hit the gravel of like the, you know, of the Oh, yeah, exactly. Fill. That's the proper and, procedure. And then yeah. it just pauses and it goes, so I bet you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty. That's exactly how that goes. <laughs> um, so I grab the, grab the shovel, get back on. Should we continue around and then uh I, I got sassed over the radio by the volunteer for getting off and on moving equipment and i really really wanted to sass back and be like and you don't know what a coal shovel is my friend give me a coal <laughs> shovel instead of a snow <laughs> shovel next time <laughs> so but i was like at the end of the day it's like okay it's against the rules but that felt like a just application of it we were going slow it was safe and suitable ballast and i did it the proper way you know because there is i saw a your dedicated video that talked about coal also. shovels but for anybody who hasn't seen the video talking about coal shovels the biggest distinguishing feature in a coal shovel is pretty like it's got a narrower face and it's got like a little bit of walls on the side of it to help hold the coal and, and it's short handles, so you can fit the thing without having to, you know. Yeah. The, uh, the the shovel that's modeled in game for the coal burners is actually a transfer shovel, which is like what the BNB folks would use when going from tender to bunker or bunker to tender or whatever. Uh, not necessarily bigger, but it's, it's just flat and square, and it's not designed to be... Um, thrown in an elaborate arc really it's just uh, right. okay it holds a, a set amount of stuff it's flat it doesn't have to hold it through kind of a, a rotary acceleration because on these littler engines there's not a lot of space to shovel and so to get it up to the front of the firebox which is sometimes you know a good 10 it, on bigger engines it can be up like 12 feet away which is like a little bit less than four meters i mean it can be a long throw so you really have to put some speed on it so it's almost like a, a bowling throw or something with the the shovel and and if you had flat sides i mean you would not be keeping the coal in that thing so i am getting eaten by the train okay That's now fine. i gotta eat it out give me your soul That's a it's an interesting phenomenon when you get eaten by the train yeah um i was setting brakes in between cordwood and I fell in between two cars. And, you you uh, trying to prevent Kenosha's back we're playing you with real consequences now, me? I guess I'm dead. So I gotta. <laughs> yeah, just... Con's not allowed to play next episode. I'm not allowed to be play me. next episode because uh, I'm actually just dead. So. Con has been run over, and we're gonna have to have Con Jr. Uh, moving yeah. forward. Yeah. <laughs> this is Con's son. All right, guys, Con Jr. We're gonna we're gonna come do some railroad today. And now we're gonna talk about railroad labor practices of the 1900s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they employed children for a long time. Really? That was Are you actually, serious? That was oh actually, my god! Yeah, they, the amount of under eighteen, like not like kid kid, but like starting at like T 
13, like 11, 12, 13, kind of getting in there. That right. was not unheard of. I don't think it was terribly super common, but... Um, we talked based... about how all our cordwood isn't tied down either and just stays. Uh, it's fine. It's, they're really well stacked by, by kids. Yeah, a couple 13-year-olds stacked that wood for us. Like absolutely perfect stack? Yeah, perfect stack. Yeah. You know, I, I will, we, we, we complain about the cranes and stuff, but if you had to manually stack the cordwood on the cars... <laughs> Yeah, that would uh, that would be painful realism right there. I feel like cordwood like this would never get transported like this. Like, wouldn't you just transport entire logs and then cut it where it gets to destination? Like, is there? Have you ever heard of a cordwood train? Like, I understand beams and planks getting transferred. I even understand like, you know, like the 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 raw iron and stuff. But like, cordwood. I, like, I genuinely don't logs? know. I genuinely don't know. I'm sure that. Um, and there was did, probably, probably doing, like a hopper and just toss them in, you know, like oh, a big you could, you could definitely car. do that too. But then getting it out is hard. Um, they had bulkhead flats like this, and I could reasonably see them carrying cordwood and stuff like this. But like, um, as far as like a unit train of cordwood, I don't think so. Maybe maybe one car or one couple cars, one off to you stage need around firewood. for firewood. Yeah, but, yeah. But specifically like a unit train like we're running, I kind of. I don't know, but I, I don't have the answer for that. I, I'm not an expert in that field, so. My, my gut says you'd see a couple cars switched around and, and, like, a unit train of firewood. I mean, that's just so much logistical pain when, you you know, you could just split firewood really easily wherever, so. Yeah, logs would make more sense, I think, to me. But uh, then again, people did crazy stuff in history, so. <laughs> Who knows? I'm trying to get on the cordwood car, and it's not proving well. I was oh there we go perfect uh you're gonna have to go into the lead line there and then run around and then right. grab it from the back and then pull it up this lead which seems like we have space for it oh we should we, like, we 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 humped like 23 cars the other day so yeah right right yeah we'll be fine and then you gotta push it up the hump so i'll do some switching for you um not your run around switching but i'll, I'll yeah. stay here at the hump and do this switching yeah if you just break me off i can go take care of the other ones yeah You've got enough momentum, uh, you'll you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm floating in. I'm free! Free, I tell you! Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That is the name of, of my locomotive. Wood. Yep. Yeah, oh, that's right. You are crazy, ape. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of cordwood, though. It's good. Yeah, what? 18 cars? 18 cars of cordwood. That is, That'll be uh, nice. That is a significant And we can distribute it, and we can do go in multiple directions with it. We don't have to go in the same direction. Yeah. So next episode, we'll distribute here locally, right? Super easy. And then coal mine and smelter? Yeah, coal there, mine and smelter. Are there any other spots? I don't think so. We'll have to, to check. We can check. We can do a quick look-see around all the industries and stuff. Okay. Just yeah, to make I, sure. I can't remember where, where we've put firewood depots and not. Yeah, we'll have to just do a quick check around all the industries, but it'll be good. We'll be able to, you know, easily grab all this stuff and. Oh yeah, the immersion, break. the immersion, man. What's what's I don't understand. Mosca, right? Mosca does it too. What? Just what? It's sliding. Oh, yeah, they all do if you have them at hundred percent break. D do all of them do? Like I thought some of them couldn't do it. Oh my though. god, cars at hundred percent break lock their wheels too. Oh, that's a bad time. This car, the back car has its wheels locked, but the rest don't. That's amazing. <laughs> you got, to, you got some, you must be hitting the gym, Con, to, to get the, the brakes down that the tight, without, that a, tight? A, without a brake club, manual handbrakes. You're pretty buff, dude. Uh, I Look actually use games. like a 17 foot long pole to, to <laughs> spin this. Okay, so I, I noticed that all the brakes are on a ratchet, right? Like they're on a little ratchet gear. Yep. And what, you just come along and flick the other end of the ratchet and it just undoes the whole, like it would just go completely released if you just flick the ratchet? I mean, you can't really just flick it because the it's it's just a little lever that's the pawl. Uh, it's not right. sprung in there, so you, it's held in by the teeth shape. So you basically have to put a, some more pressure on the wheel to like try and tighten it harder. And then you can- Oh, and then move it out of the way. Move it out of the then... way, and then it'll kind of go really quick right open. but it'll only release yeah. because of the chain tension there's no actual spring load correct yeah so it won't necessarily actually release all the way although usually if the brake was applied pretty stoutly it uh, it does just fine so that's interesting let me put up your rod there sir and we're in jousting mode 
Charge! I'll never know which direction I'm trying to go. All right. Approach. Dunk. Got it. Kind of. It's uh, a little bit of a floating uh, connection, it's, but you're fine. It's fine. Normal I think things. that the Mosca has to do that. Yeah. All right. Back up. And then... Oh, are you struggling? Yeah, it looks like it's you're struggling. It's heavy, heavy train. And we'll get you into the hump. Let me go check the hump switches to make sure you're Yeah, line us in for the right cordwood way. line here. Cordwood line is number three, isn't it? Yeah. Probably. That sounds about I right. I think so. I think we have planks and logs in the first two. All right, number three. So it's that way, this way. I love the symmetrical switch setup at the hump yard. It's really cool. It is neat. I'm glad that works it's out. It's not like way. perfectly symmetrical, but I mean, it looks, it, it's close enough. Yeah, if we had a Y switch, we could, but we can't do that, so. This hump looks so deadly from this side. It's amazing. <laughs> Very mu muy steep. Very scary. Yeah, like, <laughs> you literally just would lose all traction on the wheels going over the hump, but anyway. It's not really a big deal, like, when trucks, one half of it loses traction, right? Because they are, they like, you're saying they're held in with gravity, but there's enough room. Or would right, the truck just right. fall right out? I mean, if the, the truck, the the center pin that the bolster rides on is, is pretty tall. So, like, you have right. to get pretty far clear. And getting past the brake rigging, because all the brake rigging hangs from the car, not from the truck. So getting past all that stuff is usually pretty hard. So you'd, you'd have to have a pretty significant height change to, to have the truck just fall out. But Right. Which is which so is why did, they like, just do we, gravity. So You can unpin yourself, by the way, and just push. Um, so but when we did the caboose racing, like, would you... Um, if you went down those steps that we made in the caboose racing with the real train, would the trucks just start falling off? Uh, not with those cabooses, because those cabooses are special. Uh, bobber cabooses like that, the wheels are actually captured because the truck's kind of built into the car because it's only got two axles. Right, uh, but, but if, you had, if you had four axle uh, cabooses and trucks, yeah, if you went over those steps, you'd probably uh, lose the one truck, the first truck, yeah. Sick. So, you know, danger, it's fine. All right, you're looking like you're almost at the top there, so I'm gonna yeah, almost back. at the top of the hump actually. So that's good. I, you're, I just see you floating in the distance because I see about half of the, the thing train. is too. You don't even have to push that much weight on. Like, there's only so much on the hump at a time. Right. It's so it's not like you're pushing cars. the whole load up three percent. You're only pushing a small portion of it. Maybe five, up, six and now cars, the hump's yeah. working for you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop applying power and see if it just goes. We're not even like. It's so cool. It moves at like a constant speed over the hump because it's still pulling from behind. Right. So there's weight. Like I'm not picking up any speed, even though I should, but I'm not slowing down either. Right. And now once that clears the hump, then I'll pick up a little bit of speed. That is really neat to watch, isn't it? Yeah, it's so cool. It's a really neat concept, and it really made railroading a lot more efficient. So it's cool that we can replicate it, uh, although unprototypical for this era, of course, but... That's an, yeah, but we're we're actually off. humping loads now. Isn't that amazing? Like it's, nice. it's so good to be good humping know, load. Yeah. Humping humping like cargo and not just empties. Yeah, just make sure you don't drop the load when you hump it. So that's true. That's true. Oh god, I don't have a brake handle on this side. <laughs> I got one on the back here. Can grab. We're almost clear. Yeah, you can grab that one when we're clear. I guess. Got about three cars to clear. want to make sure we're not in the foul of the switch because i mean it's pretty pretty significantly long there all right brakes tied all right perfect <laughs> it may stop eventually look at look at look at this flat spot that wheel it's fine it's fine <laughs> awesome well let us know what you guys think in the comments down below uh obviously we got some cordwood to distribute which yep. is nice uh, although we don't really need to distribute it, we might just take it to the smelter because we need four wood at the smelter. Yeah, we'll we'll have to think about that. You know, maybe like a couple couple cars for firewood. I don't think here I've ever fueled then... up an engine 
months so far. I haven't actually pulled up an engine. Like any of our tenders, yeah. we've we've still been running on the initial wood that came with the purchase of the product. Yeah, I think so. I think Betsy's gotten a couple handfuls of wood. Oh, true, maybe it, Betsy. Yeah, no, that's that's I think, true. I Betsy think that's it. Be. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Later's. Bye.